Hello, gem lovers and industry partners. I'm David Artini with Artini and Gems, here to share with you a little bit about March's birthstone, Aquamarine. In my opinion, Aquamarine is one of the most beautiful gems found in nature. Now, for a, for a mineral, though, to be classified as a gemstone, it has to have three components. It has to be beautiful, rare, and suitable for jewelry, and Aquamarine fits all three of those. First of all, the color of Aquamarine is is kind of a pastel blue, often with a tint of green undertone. In fact, that word aquamarine comes from the word seawater. So you can imagine the, you know, the coloring of that. It can be a very pale, it can be a darker color, but all of them are they're beautiful. They're suitable for jewelry. They're beautiful in pendants, earrings, rings. Now, aquamarine is part of the beryl family. That's spelled B-E-R-Y-L. And it comes from the mineral a composition, uh, and it's a beryllium aluminum silicate oxide. I know that's a mouthful, and it's and you probably don't really care so much about that. However, the most pure beryl is colorless, and so in order for uh, aquamarine to get that blue tint, it has to have a just a pinch of iron in there. So a slight impurity of metals give that give that blue color. So you can imagine beryllium is rare in nature. It's a rare mineral. And ha having that whole composite together in one place is extraordinarily rare, meaning aquamarine definitely fits the rarity category. And also, you know, to be suitable for jewelry, it has to be durable, right? Now, aquamarine has a good hardness to it. It ranges around eight on the Mohs hardness scale. So it's suitable for coarse pendants and earrings and most ring applications. But you have to be you know, slightly more careful than you would a sapphire or a diamond. So check this out. We have some rough aquamarine crystals, and then we have several different colors. We have your most desirable color of aquamarine, which is that pure blue color. Then we have a slightly greenish blue, and then we have several smaller gems that are faceted. Let's talk first of all about this piece of rough. This is the crystal structure of aquamarine. See how it's a hexagonal crystal? They often have a very high clarity to them, and so you can uh, cut large gems. But you can see that how a cutter would often cut a long rectangular cushion to maximize the the, um, the yield from the rough. But this one here came from Pakistan. Look at this. It's a beautiful hexagonal crystal. I got this one in Nigeria. Look at this. This is a Brazilian aquamarine. Look at that color. Now, this is more of your pure, your pure blue color. Now, often this pure blue color is obtained through the process of heat treating a more of a green one. Now this one here I got in Nigeria. It's a long skinny piece of rough and I'm going to show you here. You can see the rough that it came from. Isn't that amazing? That long skinny piece of rough from Nigeria. Often you'll find however that with your darker gems it's much more difficult to find a, a, a clear crystal. Often the darker gems have inclusions in them. They have crystals in them and so on. Look at this beautiful pear shape. You can see this one has a lot more of that green color to it. This is a two and a half carat pear shape. I'm gonna show you the shield cut. Now, look at the shield cut because when we look at the video here in a moment, you're gonna see this one. Well, good morning. We are at our gem cutting facility. This is Kak, my brother-in-law. He is setting up to, to cut a beautiful aquamarine. The first step in cutting a beautiful gem is you have to select it from the rough. You look at it carefully on all angles to make sure that you've got the perfect gemstone. Then you weigh it, then you analyze it again, and then he, as you can see, he puts them in little bags ready for cutting. This is area where you've got to be very careful because you don't want to lose too much weight from the rough. Look at that shield cut. Isn't that gorgeous? He imagined that would be a beautiful shield and so uh, we'll follow this gem. Here's another one. Look at the triangle that's preformed. Preformed from the rough. Now, this is step two of the preforming. He's going to have to glue the gemstone onto the dop stick, and then he's going to uh, create the final, the final cut before we do the, the cutting and polishing on the regular lap. Now, this is the final part. He puts it onto the handpiece, and he is going to now 
prepare the cutting wheel or the lap as it's referred to and first he's going to embed diamond grit into the lap that's where the cutting takes place so each facet is cut and then it's going to be polished each gem is going to take several hours to cut now the next step is simply going to be now that he's finished cutting it he's going to take the gem off of the the dop stick and he's going to soak it he has to soak it in uh, in a solvent Boom. and you can see he's soaking it there in the solvent and that will take off the all of the residue from the glue it'll take off also any of the um, diamond polish that's embedded. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, look at that gorgeous oval cut free form aquamarine. Aquamarine, it's beautiful, it's rare, it's durable, and perfect for your next jewelry project.